Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Collaborative Business Survival Strategies eSummit. I'm so, so happy to be hosting this. This was uh, Patty Massey and I's brainchild when after she responded to an email, and she was one of the many, many who responded, thank you for that, to an email that, that I sent out. I think, Patty, was it last week that we started talking about this? Can you imagine? I mean, things are developing so fast, but last week I sent out um, my general newsletter that I send out, and this time it was called Coronavirus Marketing, and she responded with uh, you know, some thoughts that she had because she had already packaged and built something for her community and I know through you know my own community and my own clients and friends have also been doing the same. So we got our brains together, together and there's a few others who are going to be joining us as we go. And we decided to put together this virtual sort of rescue kit with all of the ideas that we have to help your business if you're struggling in the pandemic and the economic downturn because of the social distancing. All right, so uh, let me introduce you first to, uh, you know, in effect, my co-host, Patty Massey. Uh, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Sure, sure. Thanks, Chala. And I'm so excited to be collaborating with you because I think that is the theme of the day, isn't it? We're all in this together and we're all trying to figure out how to support, encourage, and you know, work together. In, in fact, that's part of my story that I'll share a little bit later about what's happened in just a week. Um, so I own a company called MICA Material Handling Solutions. Uh, we do forklift repair and maintenance, uh, waste management, and we have about 50 million a year in revenue. So it's a fairly decent sized company. But I also have a company called Michael Learning, and that's where Chala and I have connected, because what we're all about is creating safe workplaces, primarily around harassment prevention, drug-free workplace, and uh, workplace violence prevention and active shooter preparedness. So when this pandemic emerged, um, we immediately recognized it as another important issue for our community. And that is how do you keep your employees safe and healthy during this environment? And then how do you address some of the business issues related to that? So we created an ebook. And it's corona, um, best, or coronavirus best practices for navigating in the workplace. And we've gotten thousands of views um, to date and lots of uh, interested parties like the city of New York, who's one of my biggest clients in the city of L.A. and some big corporations as well. So that's awesome. We, we're all about safety in the workplace, especially for women. All right. So. You know, I'm going to shift it up and actually ask everyone on the screen to introduce themselves. So I'm going to go straight to Cynthia Sprague, CEO of Sales, the Sales Beacon, which you can see right behind her. Tell us a little bit about what you do, Cynthia. Yeah, so Sales Beacon helps companies work remotely and we make virtual teams perform and we've been doing it for over a decade for large tech companies like Cisco, Dell and others. And um, what our real specialization is, is cross-functional projects, implementing dashboards, control, putting in meeting control so that virtual teams can stay on track. And we are also a completely virtual company. We've been operating for uh, 13 years. I did my master's in telecommuting. I haven't worked in an office since 94. Wow. So my experience with remote work goes back 25 years. And because we have to operate between so many clients, we're Cisco and Microsoft collaboration experts and a Cisco partner in North America. So we are called Sales Beacon because our traditional client base has been global sales and marketing operations. But we're right now we're in the midst of transitioning our brand to Vertira, one of the things you're helping us with, Chala. So uh, we've got a lot of experience not only helping clients work remotely and performing, but also ourselves as a, comp all of my management staff is uh, across Canada actually. And we maybe meet once a year. I don't think we're gonna meet at all this year. So. Uh, <laughs> I know kinda... last time, that was the last time we met. <laughs> exactly, yeah. In Halifax. All right, well, thank you so much. We're so happy to have you. And uh, Crystal, why don't you introduce yourself? Sure, we're getting a little bit of 
feedback here. Let's just, <clears throat> can you hear me? Yes. Great. Okay. Hi, I am Crystal Coffin. I'm the CEO and founder of Step Business Solutions. We are an international digital marketing implementation company. What we do is that we provide you the hands-on and done-for-you virtual marketing support for small businesses and entrepreneurs. What it means is we take your, the people's visions, ideas, and bring them to life online using systems, structures, whatever is best suited for specific needs, goals, aspirations, ROI, target measures. Uh, and together we create these online systems, courses, trainings, webinars, admin systems, whatever it is that helps in the business growth for that business. And really essentially that frees up time for my clients so they can focus on the management of the business, their sales, their content delivery. Excellent, awesome. So I, I briefly stopped, oh, there you are again. Hi, Pam. This is Pam Isom, the CEO of Ice Safety Solutions. Can you introduce yourself, Pam? Oops. Pam is having some technical difficulties, I think. Can you hear us, Pam? Hmm. All right. So what I'll do now is while we wait for Pam to come back, I'll introduce myself. As I said, my name is Chala Dinkwe. I'm the CEO of The Repositioning Expert. If you are in the WBE world, world we bank um, world, you may have seen me speak about elevator pitches and how to differentiate your business because I help businesses sell to corporations by differentiating themselves and super niching themselves to be able to make an impact and get into meetings. So how we're going to start is I'm going to shift a little, guys. What I love is this idea of um, having each person answer the same question after each other. So um, so I'm going to answer the first one, which is what's working well for you during this time of transition that other businesses can benefit from. And what's working well for me is I've always um, been able to take the wisdom out of the company or the, you know, the, the CEO and repackage it into a a niche, a resaleable niche. And what I've now done is I've launched an online program called Nail Your Niche to be able to do that, to allow um, at a much lower price point for the masses to be able to do that. So that's one thing that I'm using. So what I can recommend to you and everything that I'm going to tell you as advice is about pivoting and reinvention. And it's all about going if you can online. Now, if you're in any of the industries that have to do with safety, hygiene, or telework, or you know, health, anything around that, or toilet paper, apparently, those are going gangbusters. I have a client who hasn't slept in three weeks, and she she sells hand sanitizers. And while things, and I asked her to be here today, and she couldn't. She said, "Chala, I would love you. And to, I'd love to be there. I love you, but." I need to sleep. So it's between sleep and, you know, this. So it's all about uh, reinvention and pivoting. And that's what I'm doing is taking all the, the prospects that I usually meet, usually at these large conferences, and I'm porting it online and I'm doing webinars and so on. So now I'd like to ask Patty with that question. Patty, tell me what's working well for you during this transition that other benefit other businesses can benefit from oh we can't hear you patty oh she she no very, i'm good now okay. i'm good awesome i had muted myself just to avoid any background noise yeah, I'm that, back. That's great thank you um like you chala i am very connected to the WeBank community and you know, I'm first vice chair of the forum on the, on the WeBank board of directors. And what I am finding is an incredible network of community support right now. There are many, many of us that are reaching out to each other to just provide some encouragement, support, and maybe collaboration. And, and that's my theme right now is what we do is we look for affiliate partners to help us to market and scale our business because everything we do is online and it has been for many, many years. But I'm always looking for opportunities to reach into different market segments. And this last week has been phenomenal for me. We, we very quickly pivoted to use one of your words 
um, to create that ebook on safety in the workplace related to the virus and got tremendous uh, response from the community, from our existing clients, as well as many of my friends and colleagues who then stepped up and said, how can I support you with your broader message? So as a result, we have signed up um, three new affiliates this week. Um, one individual had a, a LinkedIn contact list of 9,500 people which she has sent our messaging out to. So I'm really excited about the, the support, the collaboration, the engagement of our community to look for ways to pivot and to support each other. So that's Excellent. kind of what's been happening in our world. Thank you, Cynthia. What's working well for you during this time? Well, I mean, other than a up, severe uptick in our business, um, this is kind of business as usual. I mean, this is how we already worked. What's really changed for us, interestingly, is the impact of families and pets staying home. Yeah. So we already have very flexible work schedules, but we have a lot of people who uh, are not used to having to entertain children. And um, so we've been sharing a lot on our uh, networks, on our collaboration um, platforms, how to keep little people occupied. Yesterday, we shared how to make zinc lozenges. So there's no zinc lozenges available anywhere in North America. Right. You know, we already, um, we're pretty lucky because we already are pre-testing to make sure our candidates are good, to, can't, our employees are good candidates for working at home. And we have 50 hours of online training, then we have three months of mentoring. So everybody is handpicked and completely geared to virtual work. Um, I just did a blog on 15 ways to move workers home that some people might get some tips out of. I mean, what, what you need to remember is 75% of people don't listen on a virtual call. That's from a semen study and 35% don't do what they say they're going to do. So we've over the last 12 years had to really adapt how we work and manage remote teams because that is the reality. We just assume nobody's listening and nobody's going to get anything done. So. Um, yeah, so as I say, we're we're already well adapted. I am we're going through a rebranding, perhaps a month late, but um, we're in good shape. And I do have some other ideas that I'll share later for I think some security issues I'm quite concerned about that companies should be aware of. Ooh, that's great. Okay. Yeah. Crystal, what what's working well for you during this time that other businesses can benefit from? Yeah, what's really working is exactly what you said, is that willingness, the willingness to pivot both in myself and with my clients. Now, luckily, I have a background in life coaching as well, and that's really helped me to talk some of my clients off the edge, the proverbial <laughs> 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 that everything is shutting down and, it's, you know, the world is over as we know it. <laughs> And to encourage them that there is there is flexibility to pivot right now, and it's going to take us as leaders to really stand up. Yeah. So now, now is the most important time, more than any, for us to stand up and to lead. It's going to be the leaders that pull us out economically, mentally, emotionally, physically, and even spiritually. And they'll all they all are so important. Uh, with our teams, we now use, with my team, uh, we have even more communication. We use Slack as a way to communicate with each other, as well as a, a group message. Uh, we put our ideas and in, parked into Trello. Trello is a great idea action board where you can put thoughts, action items, ideas for business, tasks that we're starting or stopping, our part to-do list, things like that, leads and opportunities, all in categories so we don't forget about them and then we pivot and focus on the things that are important to us. Um, Zoom, I think everybody in the world knows about Zoom but uh, I've been really wrong lately, not everybody does and it's a free tool for people if they wanna do one-to-one -one talk. Some of my friends even use it to stay connected with each other. They'll watch a movie together, they'll use a screen share and they'll talk or they'll play board games with each other. So it's free for one-to-one -one use. And if you're gonna have more than two people, it's free up to 40 minutes. And you just, I think it's zoom.us to grab that. And other people are using, uh, they're own, starting their own Facebook private group to stay active in there, just to connect. And within there, you can do live videos, inspiration, tasks. Some people use it for business, some people use it for inspiration and personal connection. 
So just a few of the tools to pivot into and to do it differently. That's all. Very nice. Well, thank you so much. And uh, Pam, welcome. We cut off earlier. Um, first, do you want to tell us about you and what your company does? And then we'll take the second question of what's working well for you during this time. Oh, we can't hear you. Uh, okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my I apologize for being late. Um, as you can imagine, uh, so my company, uh, in case of emergency or eye safety solutions, we provide uh, medical equipment, safety supplies, see all types of safety training um, and plans for our clients. So we've been in the middle of this since about January 10th. So we actually were on the forefront of this and I apologize, I am late to the call. I might have to step out as well because I just found out that I can get N95, I can get 100,000 N95 masks in two weeks from a lane out of China. So um, so I was kind of caught up in, in what it's gonna take to get that that airplane here. So um, so I, I guess where I see it is I'm like, I'm right in the middle between what the corporations need and what the hospitals need. And I've never in my life had to say no to major corporations because you're being too greedy about what your requests mm -hmm. are with how many, like yesterday we ran out of thermometers. We went through our last 5,000 thermometers and we had a corporation call and you know wanted 5,000. And I said, how many do you need and how many is it nice to have? Because I have childcare centers and I have hospitals that need those thermometers. You know, so it's been a little, it's been really difficult from kind of a moral perspective to tell these big companies no, or mm -hmm. to have these companies ask for these items and then turn around and say, can I get bulk pricing? And it's like, no, you know, or turn around and sorry, I'm like venting now, but you know, or turn around and say, um, you know, can we get net 30? And I go, no, it's cash on board because my manufacturers are telling me to have cash on board. So I'm going to tell you to have cash on board. And they're like, we don't agree with that. And then it's like, click, I'm going to go to the next company, you know? And so I kind of worry about the repercussion when it comes like three months later and I run into them at a conference. So that's how that is. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, on the um, my company has been able to operate because we are considered essential. Um, the hardest thing is I had to furlough 80 uh, percent of the company. Uh, I had to make that decision on Monday. So we were one of the first companies that did it. But my operations director said it's better for us to furlough so they can get into the unemployment line cash out their sick time and vacation time and give them as much cash as they can have and get them into that unemployment line so they could start getting unemployment. Uh, and he said, we want them to have a company to come back to once this is over. So 80% were furloughed, 20% are still uh, working around the clock getting, getting that out. Um, and then from a family perspective, I have kids in college, so it's been, instead of keeping my kids busy, it's been really difficult to see the fear that a 20-year-old girl or a 20-year-old, you know, I have a 20 and 21, um, to see the amount of fear and uncertainty about their colleges not communicating well, um, coming home. I have to assume that they're positive when they come home, and that's a lot of things that families aren't taking account of, is when your kids come home, they could be positive. So even though she came home, I had to quarantine her. Um, and then of course she had a sore throat and panicked. And I, you know, we, I'm a safety company. We went through the, you know, all the ifs, ands, or buts. And then I was like, you don't have it, but still stay quarantined because I don't want to get a sore throat right now. So, mm -hmm. um, and the last thing I'll, I'll say on that is, um, my 21 year old came up with the home economics curriculum, a home economics curriculum. <laughs> so it's a cute little curriculum, like how do I sew on a button? How do I change a tire? How do I make a roux? So, and then the professors are like mom, dad, little sister. So, so that's kind of the upside of all of this. That is nice. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for being here.
All right, so I'm going to get on to the next question, which is what advice do you have for businesses while the pandemic continues? And I'll go first because I just did a webinar about this yesterday and I'm going to give you another date. I'm doing two more dates. It's um, called social distance marketing. And so here's the thing. I mean, and I researched all, all this and I, I looked up companies and stories who are really doing this well. So, um, you know, what advice I have is I have uh, five five ways for you to make cash right away. So the first one is forward selling. Did you know that the search words cheap flights coronavirus went up by 2,450%, obviously, right? And there are actual websites that are just selling tickets because of the coronavirus. That is the way that they've branded themselves. So that's just one example and, you know, in the um, webinar, which is free, I give you a lot more examples of how companies are forward selling. If it's a service that you can't use right now because of social distancing, you can definitely make cash or a product. You can make cash for forward selling. So um, mm -hmm. selling it now for a better deal to be able to um, use it after, you know, the social distancing is over. The second one is reinvention. And um, there's a story about uh, something called quarantine cakes. A bakery only had a month left of cash uh, to survive. And their sales and foot traffic completely stopped. And what they did was they started um, putting sayings about uh, the coronavirus, like wash your hands or, you know, social distance and have fun at home or cute little sacks on top of the cakes. And then people and encouraged people to send it to them while they were uh, to each other while they were in social isolation and they had the highest sales day of their entire history. So there are examples of repivoting. Another one is um, a babysitter company that I use uh, have now created virtual rooms of uh, ages four plus of 20 minutes each uh, length duration where they p make them play games together. So they'd all be like this in a room, in a virtual room, and they had they're playing games together. So I thought that was brilliant. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, in Canada, you know that um, medicine is free, uh, but you have to wait for it <laughs> and a long time for it. So now what happened is yesterday, my 10 year old had uh, an abrasion, something on his skin that was like fungal like. And I only had to take the picture and send it to the pediatrician. And I got an answer in 20 minutes. Normally, I would have to drive for an hour downtown in Toronto traffic, wait for half an hour, and then drive an hour back. In 20 minutes for parking because that's Toronto. So th that is the repivoting of what's possible for you. And I know that telemedicine is going crazy. And the last thing that I'm going to say is my son goes to a private school. And while all the public school students have nothing to do. People are going crazy trying to find them something to do. Every single day we're doing homework. He's on classroom on Zoom with his school. His teachers call him at home on my cell phone and we're doing homework with him. So it's teleschool. Why does he ever need to go to school if you know like if it's going like exactly how it's supposed to go. So I think there's just enormous potential in reinvention and repivoting. And the other ones are discounting. Um, Uber Eats now has zero delivery. And unfortunately, I used it last night to carb load <laughs> after a very long day. And then, um, you know, companies like Namecheap.com, they're offering 95% off everything. So you can actually build a website for $12. And then um, something to what um, Pam was talking about is find or become an, become an alternate resource. Everybody's looking for an alternate right now. So you can either find or become one. And then the last one is borrow. Um, I know that the U.S. government has released a whole bunch of, um, you know, tactics and the Canadian government as well. They've lowered enormously the um, borrowing rates. They're, you know, lowered risk ratings for borrowing. It's just... Uh, it's, it's almost like a free for all. It's this is the best time really to borrow, right? If you're mm -hmm. gonna, this is the time, unprecedented in history. So this is the time, and uh, you know, I'm sure in the U.S. as well, they're giving us um, money for you know um, for employees. They're doing subsidies for employees. They're doing 
all sorts of things that this is the time. If you don't take advantage now, it's unprecedented when hopefully we're never going to have this happen again. So that's me. Hopefully that didn't take too long. I'm going to move on to Patty now. So Patty, tell yeah. us what advice so, you have. Yeah, I want to focus on the whole concept of relatedness. Um, I heard something really interesting. It's like we don't really want to use the term social distancing. We want to use the term physical distancing because it's so important right now for us to stay connected and and be supportive and encourage each other. So, yeah, my advice would just be to focus people on shared goals you know, encourage regular video meetings, uh, find some creative ways for people to feel more connected. I know a lot of companies are doing virtual uh, coffee breaks, virtual happy hours. They're having pet introductions. Um, they're doing things that they normally wouldn't do, which would hopefully when this is over, make us feel more connected to each other. So, you know, I've even heard of people doing virtual tours of their homes. I'm not sure I would do that entirely, but but the concept is, you know, let's don't isolate, even though we can't be physically together. Um, there's a lot we can do virtually. Great. That is a great distinction. Thank you. And Sarah, what do you think? What advice do you have for businesses while the pandemic continues? Sorry, there was some noise. Were you asking me? Yes, Cynthia. What advice great thanks you, have, yeah. you know what's really funny is we work with all the i don't know why we're getting feedback um there we go okay so even though the big companies aren't really equipped for full-time um you know we, there's the people they're the people selling webex and microsoft and all most of those companies I, sorry i'm getting a lot of feedback um can would you be able to mute everybody? Yeah, let's do that. OK, that sounds better. So if I were moving, um, if I were moving people home, the first I'm much more pragmatic. We're program managers. Um, I, I would be concerned with security. Your potential to get hacked is way higher from everybody being home. Aside from a VPN, get a password sharing system like LastPass implemented immediately. Hire a remote PC firm to wipe out all of the browser auto passwords from all the machines, implement dual authentication, use VoIP, not cell phones. Um, and, um, you know, unless unless they're in marketing, I would get all the social media and all the non-essential business social media off all PCs. Your security risks are super high. The other thing, other concern, real concern is bandwidth. Um, video calls like we're on right now could be a thing of the past for a while. There, um, the you're going to have an entire family home sharing bandwidth and you have all these corporate high speed office fiber networks unavailable ask the kids to use the wireless hotspots or cell phones um the internet actually could break down because everybody is concentrating usage where they're not used to having it concentrated up your employees bandwidth for a few months and ask them to use it wisely i should think of implementing this as well um once people have gone through the virus and i'm um thinking about the comment on relationships and, and they can prove it, move them back to the office, especially the extroverts. We've had dozens of extroverts and I can tell you, unless they're in sales, they wither, they wither working remotely. You need to pay special attention. Actually, you should be testing everybody to see if they're extroverts. <laughs> really pay attention to them and check in. Um, and, and, and lastly, on meetings, make sure everybody has a chance to voice an opinion. You know, we're a company of introverts, and um, if we have one extrovert on the call, it can totally take it over. So use standard meeting formats, get status updates, have a master ceremony, stick to the topic, do minutes for all calls, record action items, decisions, and remember to follow up on everything because people just aren't listening. So I could, I could go on and on, but I, I don't want to take up all the time on the the time. I've got most of these in the uh, blog that I just wrote, and we're also coming up with a book in about six weeks on uh, how to make virtual teams and work effective. There Great, you go. Because, uh, yeah, somebody just asked for your URL. <laughs> I tried to type it in, but obviously Crystal's much better at this. Awesome. Okay. So Crystal, you're next. What advice do you have for businesses while the pandemic continues? 
Uh, I know we always have to remember. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, it really is about yourself first, um, self-care. It's putting the oxygen mask on yourself. The first one is don't panic. Um, the more we panic, the more we focus on the bad, the more bad it's going to come. So it's not to say live in this la 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 world or anything like that, but just uh, the, the more we live in panic and fear and scarcity, the more of that will come. If you're watching the news, I think it's great to stay connected and watch the news, but don't immerse yourself into it nonstop. I allow myself certain time breaks. I watch it for an hour, or there's certain people that I like to watch. I like to watch the prime minister address and the Alberta, uh, my pr province's address. And then I take a break from it. And uh, me and my son have dance parties. Uh, we, we like Disney and we act goofy and it just allows our mind to take a little bit of break from this whole pandemic and scare. Um, the second one really is, and when we start feeling panicky, doing something to shift, shift that. So even if it's just breathe, I know this sounds uh, elementary, but most people don't even take the time to properly breathe. And it's the five, five, five rule. So inhale slowly for five seconds, exhale slowly for five seconds, and repeat that for at least five minutes. <clears throat> just taking that break for yourself. Um, the third one is finding like-minded people, positive people to hang around with. I know Patty mentioned this, and it's if there you can't find a group, start a group. I've started my own group where we meet on Mondays and Fridays. Mondays will be more business orientated. What do you need? What's going well in business? Just like this conference, what tips and tricks are working, passing that along to people. Where do you need support? Friday's more about a personal connection. How did the week go? Are you uh, done being a teacher for your kids now? <laughs> you know, I see these funny memes online, like spanking has now been introduced back into the school <laughs> curriculum, you know, so silly things like that, you know, and, and so this is a trying time and it's about staying, staying sane in a different way. The last one, or the last one is, uh, do a cleanse, cleanse of your house, your computer, just like Cynthia's talking about, of your finances. And I've had to do a cleanse of my family. Uh, and we are not in a lockdown situation, but we are in a choice of self-isolation. My family still goes to work. They still are involved in public where the risks may be very low, but I'm just choosing to use this time to stay inward and making the right choice, uh, the responsible choice. I have family that have high risk situation, high uh, health risk, including myself, and I just I choose no, and I'm not in a place of ignorance, or I don't like you or anything like that. Um, but I'm choosing to be a leader in that regard. Um, take your power back. You have the power to do this, to get organized, get creative, get motivated. This is our time to start thinking differently outside of the box and then what we're used to. Uh, so. These, once you're feeling well, your self being will reflect into your business, and you can start practicing these tools in your business and helping your other your employees as well. Thank you. Awesome. So, Pam, what advice do you have for businesses during the pandemic? So, my advice to businesses is to look at your cash flow and your expenses in two week increments. So two weeks, four weeks, six, eight, and so on. And be really hard and honest and say, if I don't have revenue in two weeks, what are my expenses? Uh, what's going to be my expenses in four weeks? And what's going to be the revenue? And how much cash do I have to support that? And what I really recommend is making a plan A that if this goes more than two weeks, what will be my next steps on my expense side? If this goes four weeks, what's gonna be my next step, et cetera? So for example, on our four week plan, we had a note on there that's it is an action item that said, talk to landlord about suspending, uh, you know, suspending our lease because our lease is very expensive. We're, you know, we're in, what, 25, 30,000 square feet. So it's very expensive. And so once we saw the shelter in place was going to happen for three weeks here in Northern California, we immediately went to the landlord because a three week shelter calls for our four week plan. 
And then that's when we started furloughing people. You know, we started cutting every single, single expense, contractors, you know. So I think that's probably the first part. Uh, I think the second part after you've made all your plans is to use Loom, L-O-O-M, uh, Loom.com, not to be confused with Zoom, L-O-O-M. <laughs> We've been using Loom.com. It's, it's awesome, you guys. It is a video email. So an email that I would type to my customer, I could video myself and send it by email. It's so awesome. And so it not so now when I'm really trying to communicate something that I need some empathy, you know, like if I were like, hi, Patty from XYZ Corporation, how are you feeling? You know, to say that in a video message is, is really critical. Um, post much more on LinkedIn. And I know that, uh, Crystal, you mentioned that you blog frequently. If you don't blog, um, stay top of mind. Um, if you have any old awards or anything like that, post that um, because you need to stay top, top of mind as a thought leader within your organization. So we've had more companies come to us. We were really fortunate because we were just featured in a magazine um, literally like yesterday. So that kind of went crazy and all these companies started calling us. Um, really make sure your doctor has telemedicine. Uh, make sure your parents um, and other seniors in your family that you have a mask and gloves that if mom or dad becomes sick and that doctor needs to telemedicine with them, meaning just get a laptop and do some type of FaceTime, that you have the ability to do that. My mom is five hours away, so I can't do that. But uh, a WBE who is in that state and in that city is ready to go with mask and gloves and everything that she can do to telemedicine with my mom. My mom's 83 and lives alone. <laughs> um, yeah. And then the last thing is, uh, well, two last things, reconnect with corporations. They have so much time on their hand. <laughs> and so literally like send the, all those corporations who maybe said no to you in the past and they're just in your database, just send them a little message. Hey, just checking to see how you're doing. I just did that with General Motors, with Reggie, if you guys know who he is. And then we actually ended up into a massive sales conversation. So, and the last thing uh, is, um, and I know this is hard, but it's okay to say not yet regarding video meetings and calls. I was literally on 10 calls in eight hours and it wiped me out. It just wiped me out yesterday. I just was crying all the way home because it was just too many. So I'm really going to, starting Monday, be more strict about not scheduling so many meetings back to back to back to back that I just have to say, no, I'm not available or I'm not, or can you, can you record that for me so I can listen to it? And then people agreed to do that. Great. Thank you so much. And welcome, Pat. I'm so glad you made it. Oh. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Great. We can hear you. Maybe you can introduce yourself and tell us what your company does. Okay. Yeah, my company is Pope Consulting. This is our 44th year in business. We have specialized in diversity, inclusion, and culture change all of these years. So my late husband and I coined the term diversity in 1977 to refer to the changing demographics of the U.S. workforce. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. So I bet you have a lot of advice for business <laughs> during the pandemic, especially for yeah. diversity. Like, well, you know, and, and we are in one of those industries that when things get tight, then what we do is often viewed as something that can go to the back burner unless they're being sued for something or whatever. And so I would say one of the biggest lessons I learned over the years uh, is that businesses will go through tough times. That's the nature of business. But if you have a good product and or a good service, just stay the course because it will come back. There will be hard times and they're tough. And this is one of them. Just about all of the work that we had on the books has been postponed um, because 
corporations have a responsibility to protect their workers. And so bringing people into a room for training isn't something they're going to be doing right through here. Is there anything that's working well for you during this time of transition? Uh, well, we're just starting. So we're really looking at, and we had already been looking at how can we deliver our services through other vehicles. So we do have some clients who are saying, can you do this virtually? We have the ability to put, you know, people into some virtual training room. We have to go find the local place where we can have our trainer be a part of that kind of a setup. So we're doing a lot of that kind of research right now. Patty, Massey, and I have worked together before creating e-learning programs. So we're talking about just she just said the other day we can do an e-book in three days. I'm like, oh, okay, great. Which do we do first? So um, just a lot of those pivoting. Yes, that's the, the key word, isn't it? So, um, folks, I know this is a new question for you, but I'm going to start uh, by answering it. Is what is what is the one absolute thing to avoid doing during this time of flux? And my answer to that is the absolute. But well, I I had to change it because of what uh, Pam said because she had my answer. My first one was. Do not stop your visibility. So you had amazing points for that, Pam. Um, so the other thing that I think you absolutely have to avoid doing is waiting it out without doing anything. Because if you do not self reinvent, if you don't pivot, if you don't find a different way of doing business in this environment, we don't know if it's going to last 12 months or three months or two weeks. To, to Pam and to uh, Pat's point, you have to be already looking for alternate ways of making money. All right, Patty, what do you think is the one absolute thing to avoid during this flux? Now, I, I'm going to be uh, more broad based. I just recently brought on board a couple of months ago a Chinese American young woman as uh, my director of communications. And seeing what's happening through her lens makes me really concerned about people laying blame for this oh, and yes. Yes. a lot of bias. And, yes. and we hear about people like being thrown off the subway because they're coughing or people having a bias against Asians. And I just feel like as a nation, you know, I, it, this is not somebody's fault. And it's unfair to um, project and create even more challenges in the workplace based on this incident. And, I, and I'm sure Pat would agree because this is the kind of work that she does. Right. Yeah, my, my daughter-in-law works at an exercise place that just opened, it's a new concept. And they actually had somebody who called there and said, you don't let Chinese people come work out there, do you? Oh, exactly. That's exactly what Patty's talking about, yeah. Right, yeah. All right, thank you, Patty. Cynthia. What is the one absolute thing you think we should avoid doing? I think we should ab avoid being um, reliant on North American press. And I think we should go on YouTube and see what the other international press is doing because there's a, there's a lot more experience coming out of Europe, especially in terms of what the signs are. I was talking to a doctor yesterday. I was the order of medicine for Canada. And he has friends, two doctors in New York who's got, who have the virus right now, and neither of them had a fever. They both started out with sore throats. And um, people with the mild symptoms, they already know how to Czechoslovakia, for example, that people with mild symptoms may, may present differently, be carriers, and think they don't have it, so they'll be less constrained. So anybody that is, anybody has any, it's not a prevent, don't do, but. Um, anybody that has any sign of any illness, whether you think it's a cold or flu or anything should be, until they really, really understand this disease, everybody should be self-isolating. So um, I, I, we, we, make a choice of, we make a point going on YouTube and watching international press and just watching, because it's very easy to get it into the silo of North America. And we're sort of behind the curve right now. So um, that's what I would say. Okay. And what about you, Crystal? What do you think is the one absolute thing to avoid doing during this crisis? Uh, it's like after each person talks, I'm like, oh, that's what I was going to say. And then the next person says <laughs> it. So uh, 
I agree in the fact that uh, what I've come to realize is that we really have no clue who has what and what is like who's infected without proper testing and proper um, implementations. I, I have no clue, and so uh, I need. I have stopped. Even though we're not on lockdown, I have just stopped being around everybody, and that includes my family. And I'm just taking my own responsibility of of self precaution. And I can't assume that just because somebody doesn't look sick or they've already had a cold for two weeks, that I don't know what this looks like. And um, you know, regardless, I have. I mean, I do have underlying conditions. Regardless of that or not, it's just the responsible thing to do is that uh, I'm willing to wait it out at home and instead pivot. So it's it's really is stopping um, some of my family members say like, what do they want us to do, hibernate? The answer is yes, it, yes. And they um, do, <laughs> exactly, I know exactly. It is, and it feels a little bit, if I dare say so, righteous North American attitude that I'll do what I want, when I want, how I want. I've been doing it like this forever, like whatever, I, I, I can get some flu. And we need to stop that thinking and think responsibly and um, just treat it seriously. It may not be uh, the plague or something like that, but it is still is very serious. Yes. <laughs> and, Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. Pam, what do you think? What is the one absolute thing to avoid doing during this time? Oh, I am too. Um, avoid believing any text messages that you see. So anything that comes to you from a deck's like, I heard this is happening, just delete, because a lot of that is, is already being fake. And But really the most important thing is think with your head and not with your heart. Think with your head and not with your heart, because your heart will get you killed, okay? And, and when you think with your head and not with your heart, I would challenge all of us to sit down and kill your company kill it yourself in the next over the weekend and pretend that nobody is going to call for your product or service. And if nobody ever calls again, what would you do next to make money? And we actually do that every five years, every five years, I get my managers, we get a hotel and it, it's not a retreat. It's not, it's just like, we're going to kill the company. And the first <laughs> time we killed it, we, we were only doing CPR training, you know, the CPR, the pumping. And when we killed the company, we said, well, if nobody asked for CPR training because somebody says CPR doesn't work, what would we do? And that's when we created evacuation training. And then we killed that. And that's when we created active shooter. And then we, you know, killed that and created pandemic. So just really play that game with your, don't think with your heart when you're doing it. Think with your head. What would I do if nobody called for my product or service again, what would I do next? And it's amazing when you take that approach, the pivots become much easier and much more lucrative and much more revenue generating. I love it. Okay, some very nice advice. Pat, what do you think is the one absolute thing to avoid doing during this flux? Well, I think not panicking is an important one. And it's hard not to do that when you hear all the stuff on the news. Um, I think it's just be sensible, be smart, um, change your habits. Uh, every day I listen to the news, I hear something else. Yeah, I should be doing that too, like washing every door handle and, you know, all the things we touch, our remotes, our phones, all those things. Um, and, and so I think just, you know, that's a big one for me. Just try to do what I can do. Like you were saying, be responsible and not going out anywhere unless I absolutely have to, that kind of thing. And, and I think the, the other thing we can do is pay more attention to the things that we hear people say who are feeling fearful, because as our fear goes up, our biases go up and we, we see a lot of the reactions and things. Patty and I had an e-learning program that we created some years ago and it was like a stimulation experience. And there was a promotion exercise in the middle of it. And so I wrote, I had positioned the black female to be the most obvious best candidate, hands down. And there was an Asian male and a white male. Well, for a long time, the Asian male was always the number one person chosen. The black female, who was the best person, was number two. Until the economy tanked in 2008, 2009, 
and she slipped the third place. So what that tells us as, 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 as we get more fearful and concerned for ourselves, our biases are more likely to come out. Wow, that is we'll so true. And try to be an ally. You know, when we hear some of these ridiculous, ignorant things being said, how can we be supportive? Even if we, you know, don't know any people who are Chinese, how, how can we be Chinese, uh, supportive? Because it's just the right thing to do. Absolutely. Thank you. So uh, my last question of all of you is, do you have a specific resource to share with us? And for my part, I've been talking about this webinar that I've been doing. It's called Social, Social Distance Marketing. It's uh, next week at 3 p.m. It's free. It's uh, March 25th at 3 p.m. Eastern. And I'm just going to share some more examples of all the things that I've told you about and give you a step-by-step -step guide to how you can um, repurpose your content to put it online. So I'm going to give you that. Um, what about you, Patty? I know you have something. Yeah, we have a couple of things. Um, the first one is really simple and easy, and we can provide our ebook, and it's about uh, best practices and how to navigate in the workforce with the coronavirus issues. Um, it was uh, written by Johns Hopkins, Harvard, CDC, the WHO. We're not the content experts. We just compile the best of the best advice into one easy to read book and every employee at every company should read it. So it's very simple and straightforward and that's a free resource. And then secondly, I mean, we have this whole safety first program that we are offering a huge discount right now to people who want to be proactive and train their employees on things like harassment prevention and violence prevention and reliance on drug and alcohol, because I foresee that we are going to have some challenges in our workforce after this passes by. We're not going to go back to... She froze. She froze. Okay. Oh, I'm not sure if she's continuing, but uh, I'm going to go on to Cynthia. Can you hear me, Cynthia? I can. Okay. So great. I have a couple of, I actually have two business ideas um, that I can't do. So I'm going to give them away and hopefully somebody can do it. All what right. occurred to me as I woke up this morning, and I'll get into the other thing later, is that. Um, we're having all these people that are going to have this virus. 80% of them are going to be light. You know, they're probably not going to be contagious. Why isn't it's called the coronavirus? Why, which is crown in Spanish. Why does somebody supplying hospitals with little pins or stickers or certifications? You can actually say you've had it. And um, then, you know, it, I, I don't know why anybody isn't working on this because you, it'd be very handy to be able to identify um, if you're out, if somebody's had it, you're not going to be as, as worried about interacting with them. So anyway, I'll just put that out there. Maybe somebody can think about it. Um, so we have, uh, as I said on our website, I did an hour-long webinar, I think, for We Connect International um, about six months ago. And it's quite a, it goes into a lot of strategies about how to make teams um, effective online. I've already mentioned the blog and the... Um, we also have a uh, what I call a virtual team assistance, which is um, four to six hours a week. We can set up online dashboards. We can get your team functioning properly. So we have like almost a, a SWAT team that we can put on. We can overlay on existing teams to make them work better. I actually think that most people are going to be concerned with the mechanics of the VPNs and the security and all that for a while. And I, I think that the, the actual mechanics of teams and how they're going to function is going to take a little longer to show up in terms of not working. But um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're uh, as I say, this is what we do all every day. So I hope somebody does my um, my idea because I'd like to get a little sticker if and when I get over this thing. <laughs> all right, good. We'll keep you in mind. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, Crystal, do you have a specific resource to share with us? Yeah, but first of all, I just wanna say, um, as you're sharing, please put in the chat, uh, all you presenters, what, a link or how they can find your information that we're talking about. That would be super helpful. Just click on the chat button and type it in there. Um, 
service I am offering is that uh, I will give you an hour of my time if you want some, we can talk together about ideas specifically to your business. What is it that you need? How can you pivot? I can do, uh, you can provide me with your information, your websites, your social media, things like that, and can give you a hit list of ideas that you can get, um, you can pivot more in your business and how you can get through this, this system. So I'm going to throw in my uh, email booking link and yeah, so that's how I can help. Thank you. Thank you. And Pam, do you have something specific, a resource that you could offer? Can't hear you. Oh, okay. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Um, I would say if you can follow me on LinkedIn, we're doing uh, various webinars. I know Patty was part of it. Uh, we do, before it was like how to prepare for a pandemic. Now we're going through how to run your business through a pandemic. Uh, so I would say follow us on LinkedIn. We're probably gonna be doing another webinar uh, coming up Tuesday. So we're trying to identify the time. But on a personal level, um, I spent, two hours of my day yesterday delivering N95 masks and thermometers to seniors. So, and, and to people I knew. So people I knew text me and um, I, I wanna offer that as just a friend that if you have a family member or senior here in Northern California, they don't have a thermometer, they don't have an N95, you need them checked on. Or if you have a friend of a friend, I'm here in Northern California, I will drive to hell or high water to make sure that they are okay and to check on them on a personal level for any WBE. Wow, that is beyond and above, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and probably the last part is for your clients who need, we're putting together a re-entry plan for corporations. So as remote workers all come back to the workplace, um, we're putting together a re-entry online training for those employees to take the training for them to come back. We're putting together welcome gifts, which have hand sanitizer, mask, and all these kinds of things. And um, let make sure all your customers know the OSHA is going to be coming up with the OSHA COVID-19 standard for all employers, regardless of size. So pay attention to that OSHA standard when it comes out. And if you need help writing the plan or writing the training, give me a call and I'll help out. Thank you. That's great. Pat, what do you have a specific resource to share with us? Um, we're working on new blogs to put out that relate to this topic. It's funny, as Patty knows, one of the things that is in our e-learning program is the whole concept of social distance, which is kind of different than what the social distancing is that we're supposed to do now. So we're finishing the blog on that and we'll be doing some other ones. And I love the idea that that Pam, you just shared about reentry online because I think that can really help as people who are from different backgrounds. It seems like any Asian background works, you know, we're not so good about knowing who's Vietnamese versus Chinese versus Japanese versus, you know, Philippine or whatever. And so, you know, some reminders that to think about while you were dealing with what you were dealing with, maybe they were the ones who were being targeted for harassment. Uh, somebody told me in Northern California last week that um, they were getting ready to walk into to Walmart and another customer yelled into somebody who was coming out, are there any Chinese people in there? So, you know, if your coworkers have experienced some of that stuff, they're going to come back to work feeling a little bit differently about everything that's happened, you know, on top of the things we all feel they're gonna have this extra layer of stuff that they had to deal with because of who they are. And um, to show more empathy around that, I think it's gonna help them come back into the workplace mentally and emotionally and all of that feeling pretty better to be supported. Excellent, excellent points. Patty, you cut out before you left. Um, were you finished with the resources that you were gonna share with us? Yeah, thank you for noticing that, Charles. I was talking to myself, <laughs> and you were all frozen. 
Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that the ebook that we've created, um, I am happy to share that with anybody and everybody. We can even co brand it for you. So we can create a link and you can send it out to all of your customers, clients, suppliers, employees. It's really great information and written by. Johns Hopkins, ours, and so we just compiled the best of the best. And then the second thing is kind of what Pat was saying is that we have some really powerful e-learning courses. So if everybody is like twiddling their thumbs and wondering what to do with your staff, we can get them prepared because I suspect we're going to have some issues when we re-enter the workplace. So we have harassment prevention, implicit bias, workplace violence and drug-free workplace. There are gonna be some people that turn to substance abuse during this challenging time. So employers need to know how to handle that. So we've got those tools and we will also, we're also willing to do that at a discounted price right now for everybody. Very nice. And it is true because I had empanadas last night, which I haven't allowed myself for a year. So I know that's, <laughs> that's happening to me. Imagine what's happening to people who drink <laughs> so i want to thank all of you and um and for those of you who have um something to share like a resource i noticed that you're putting it on to the chat and that's great if uh you want us to continue this thread of conversation those of you who are watching please let us know i'm so happy to host this again uh and crystal's here with me and uh <laughs> Patty's here with me, and thank you so much to our guests, Cynthia, Cam, and Pat. Thank you so much for being here with us, everyone, and take care, stay safe, wash your hands. All the best. Thanks, Carla. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.